Okay, so get this right. India, they produce more movies than anywhere else in the world. Wow. And it, it got me thinking about how we always compare our eyes to cameras, you know, just talking about resolution and stuff. Yeah. Like you're walking around with uh, 4K eyeballs or something. But uh, what if that's completely wrong? Hmm. You know, you shared some really cool articles and studies about uh, human vision. I'm ready to dive in. Yeah, it's it's a really cool question. Um because it shows how we kind of just take our vision for granted. Right. We use all these technological uh, metaphors. Yeah. But the reality is much, much more complex. Yeah. Our eyes aren't just like passively recording the world, right? right. They're actively yeah. constructing it. Yeah. One article even called it like a meat-generated image, which I thought was interesting. It's <laughs> not about capturing, you know, a perfect image. It's about our brain like making sense of this constant flow of information. Exactly. And and think about that classic uh, Salvador Dali painting. Oh, yeah, yeah. That uh, morphs into Abraham Lincoln. Uh, depending on how far away you are. Right. Our brains are doing that kind of processing all the time, but seamlessly, so we don't even realize it. So even if like, we could calculate our vision in, in megapixels, which some researchers have actually tried to do, yeah. it wouldn't really tell the whole story. Yeah. Absolutely not. Take, uh, for example, the phobia. The phobia. It's this tiny spot on our retina responsible for sharp central vision. Okay. It's like having this high-resolution zoom lens. Right but only for a very tiny area. Okay. Everything in our peripheral vision is much, much blurrier. Yeah, I remember seeing this. Uh, it's like a crazy XKCD illustration that shows how drastic that that difference is. Yeah. It's like our peripheral vision is made up of these like pixelated blobs. It is. It's a great uh, visual representation. And what's remarkable is uh, how our brains stitch this patchwork of information together mm -hmm. to create the illusion of a complete like high resolution picture. You know, we're not really aware of how much is being filled in uh, based on our expectations and past experiences. Right, and and that makes me wonder, like, if our brains are doing so much of the heavy lifting, how much can we actually trust what we see? Mm. Like, think about, uh, you know, eyewitness testimony or those optical illusions that just completely trick our perception. That's, that's a really critical point. Our brains are kind of wired to make sense of the world. Right. Even if it means... Uh, filling in gaps or making assumptions. Right. Evolutionarily, that's been you know crucial for survival. But it also means that our vision is inherently subjective. Yeah. Influenced by our individual brains and and experiences. So it's less about uh you know recording this perfect image and more about creating a useful one. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Think about um how quickly our eyes dart around. You know, constantly gathering information. Right. It's not like a camera taking a single snapshot. <laughs> we're we're actively scanning focusing and filtering what's important to us. And speaking of things our brains filter out, uh, can we talk about blind spots? Sure. The idea that we literally have like gaps in our vision, just it just seems so bizarre. It's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, it's where the optic nerve connects to the retina. Yeah. And there are no photoreceptors there to detect light. Okay. You can actually find your own blind spot with a, a pretty simple trick using just your thumb. Oh, yeah. I, I tried it earlier. Yeah. It's crazy how you, like, just stop seeing a portion of your hand, you know? Yeah. But but if we have these blind spots, like, why don't we notice them all the time? It's because our brains yeah. are, are masters of compensation. Mm. They fill in the, uh, the missing information so seamlessly. Like, we're completely unaware of these gaps in our visual field. It's, it's just further proof that, that our perception is actively constructed, not, you know, passively received. Okay, so our eyes aren't cameras. Our brains are uh, filling in gaps and, and ignoring these blind spots. It's it's starting to feel like everything I thought I knew about vision is is totally wrong. It's more about um, shifting our perspective. Okay. Instead of thinking of vision as, you know, this this simple input output system. Yeah. We need to recognize the the incredible complexity and dynamism of of our visual processing. This uh, meat-generated image idea is really sticking with me. Yeah. I mean, if what we see is so heavily influenced by our brains, like, what does that mean for how we how we experience the world? That's that's where things get really interesting. Yeah. Because if if our visual reality is is a construction, it raises all these questions about how much we can trust our memories, hmm. how we form judgments, uh, even how we understand our own identities. It's like those. Um, you know, studies that show how how easily our memories can be manipulated yeah. or how our um, 
biases can shape what we see and, and remember. Exactly. It, it challenges us to, to think more critically about what we perceive as, as reality. Mm -hmm. And it reminds us that our individual experiences shape how we see the world, quite literally. This, uh, this reminds me of how we talk about uh, movies having resolution. Mm. In films, you know, we expect neat endings, conflicts resolved, all the loose ends are, are tied up. Right. But real life, I mean, it's, it's rarely that tidy, right? Yeah. You've hit on something really crucial, this idea of uh, narrative resolution. Yeah. It's something that we see in storytelling, but often try to uh, impose on our own lives. Mm. We, we crave those satisfying endings. Yeah. But uh, what if that's just not how life actually works? There was this great line in one of the articles um, from Cinemania. It said, like, in a movie, a character can, you know, cross the street and the credits roll, perfect ending. Yeah. But in real life, after you cross the street, there's always more. Like, uh, you still got to, you know, go home, deal with dinner, laundry. Like, <laughs> life just keeps going, you know? It does, yeah. It really does. It's a, it's a perfect analogy. Yeah. Movies give us that artificial sense of closure. Mm. But real life is just this... Like continuous flow right. of experiences. There's right. always an and after what we, you know, right. perceive as the the climax. Yeah. So maybe instead of looking for these like, you know, movie perfect endings in our own lives, right. we should kind of embrace the the messiness. Yeah. The uh, you know the open endedness of it all. That's a really fascinating idea. Yeah. What if instead of striving for resolution, right, we uh, we focused on the the journey itself mm -hmm. after all you know our vision yeah it isn't about capturing this static image mm. it's about constantly adapting and and making sense of a changing world right it's a, it's like we're always in the middle of the story yeah. never never truly at the beginning or the end mm. that actually makes me think about uh goals and mm. how how we so often just focus on on achieving this one specific outcome right but if we apply this idea of you know yeah. continuous narrative mm. maybe it's less about um reaching the destination and more about how we kind of evolve along the way. I, I love that connection. Yeah. It really shifts our perspective from fixating on this, you right. know, this fixed point in the future to uh -huh. to appreciating the process of, of growth and change. Mm -hmm. It's about embracing the ands that connect yeah, yeah. one experience to the next. It's almost like um reframing our understanding of of success right yeah. instead of measuring it solely by achieving the specific goal right we could uh we could also consider you know how much we learn mm. how we adapt and how how our perspectives evolve throughout the the journey exactly and and that ties back to you know yeah how our vision works mm. we're not just passively observing right we're actively engaging yeah learning and and updating our understanding of the world yeah based on new information this is this is making me think about um relationships too you know oh, yeah. we often uh we put so much pressure mm. on finding the one or or reaching some like idealized state of of coupledom or whatever yeah but maybe it's it's more about um Yep. navigating the the ongoing complexities and evolution of of a connection yeah you know accepting that there will be challenges and changes along the way it's a it's a really profound shift in thinking mm. instead of you know seeking this this static picture perfect relationship mm -hmm. we could embrace the the dynamic yeah. the ever evolving nature of of human connection right it's about appreciating the the journey, the ups and yeah. downs, the yeah. growth that happens when when two individuals navigate life together. Okay, but but hold on. If if our brains are, you know, always filling in these gaps and, right. and constructing our our reality, right. doesn't that mean that our uh perception is inherently like flawed? Mm. You know, how can we how can we trust our own judgment if mm. if our brains are constantly like manipulating yeah. what we see? That's a really, really crucial point. Mm -hmm. And and it highlights the importance of of critical thinking. Right. And and being aware of our own biases. Mm. We, we can't just blindly trust our perceptions. Right. We need to actively question, evaluate yeah. and, and seek out different perspectives. So it's not about saying that that our vision is, you know, wrong. Right. But recognizing that it's it's just one interpretation of reality yeah. shaped by our individual brains and, and experiences. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's why it's so important to to engage with diverse perspectives mm. and, and be open to, you know, challenging our own assumptions. Right. It's about recognizing that our 
individual meat generated image yeah. is just one piece of a much larger, more yeah. complex picture. But how do we do that in a world right. that's increasingly like saturated yeah. with information and, and visual stimuli? I mean, mm -hmm. think about how realistic those, you know, those high resolution screens are getting. It's right. it's almost like our technology is catching yeah. up to it. Yeah, yeah, or even surpassing our own uh, yeah. visual capabilities. That's an incredible development. Yeah. You know, both exciting and a bit daunting. Right. Uh, as technology evolves, mm. it it becomes even more critical to hone our you know our yeah. critical thinking skills and develop like We're media on. literacy. Mm. We we need to be able to to discern between different sources of information, right? Uh, evaluate the credibility of what we see, yeah. and understand how technology can can influence our our perceptions. So it's not just about uh, you know understanding how our eyes and brains work, right? But about developing a more uh, discerning eye yeah for the world around us especially yeah. in this in this digital age where we're just bombarded with yeah. images and information absolutely it's about mean? recognizing that what we see mm. both in the physical world and online yeah is is often filtered through you know right multiple layers of of technology algorithms and and human biases the more we understand how those factors influence our perceptions mm. the the better equipped we are to you know yeah, to well, navigate this complex landscape. You know, all this talk about uh, our brains constructing reality yeah. makes me uh, think about the power of storytelling. Mm -hmm. If if our brains are wired to to create narratives, yeah. doesn't that mean we can actively uh, right. shape our own perceptions and experiences? That's a really profound question. Yeah, and it it gets at the heart of how we you know mm -hmm. understand ourselves yeah. and our place in the world. Right, we're not just passive recipients of information mm -hmm. we're, we're active creators of meaning yeah and those and the stories we tell ourselves right both uh consciously and unconsciously have a, a really powerful influence on on our thoughts yeah emotions and and actions i i love that it's it's almost like we're all yeah. filmmakers of our own lives yeah choosing the lenses through which we uh you know see the world editing the scenes that make up our our memories mm. and and narrating the the story as it unfolds it's it's a it's a really powerful analogy yeah and it it highlights the importance of of being intentional about yeah. you know the stories we choose to to tell ourselves and and the narratives that we embrace mm. are we uh yeah. are we focusing on on limitations right. or possibilities yeah. are we uh dwelling on the past or looking towards the future right the the stories we cultivate hmm. shape the reality that we experience this this whole conversation is is a serious mind shift yeah so we've gone from debunking the myth of uh you know megapixels right to to exploring how our brains uh construct reality yeah and and even how that understanding can can empower us to to shape our own narratives hmm. where where do we go from here what's uh what's the key takeaway for sure. for our listeners well, perhaps the biggest takeaway is this human vision mm -hmm. is is far more than just you know this biological process yeah. it's it's a dynamic uh interactive experience right. that's that's deeply intertwined with with our thoughts yeah our emotions and the 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 stories that we tell ourselves and maybe by by understanding the complexities of our own you know yeah. visual perception mm -hmm. we can gain a, a deeper appreciation for the the beauty yeah. and and wonder of of the world around us right. while also becoming uh you know more critical yeah. and and discerning mm -hmm. consumers of of information in this in this increasingly visual age yeah it feels like we've We've really gone beyond just understanding how our eyes work mm. and and stepped into this whole like, you know, realm of right. perception and, and meaning making. Yeah. That's that's the beauty of uh, you know, yeah, diving deep into a topic like this. It's mm. it's not just about the uh the biological mechanisms. But about uh, you know, exploring the the really profound implications for for how we experience and understand the the world. You know, one thing that really stuck with me is yeah. this idea that uh, our lives aren't like movies mm. with the, you know, neatly resolved endings. It's uh, it's more like this continuous, yeah. ever evolving story with no real beginning or end. And and embracing that perspective can be yeah. incredibly liberating. Right. It, it frees us from the uh, the pressure of, of seeking those you know yeah. perfect resolutions, allowing us to... Uh, 
appreciate the the beauty and the messiness of the journey itself. I'm I'm starting to see how this uh you know right. understanding of vision can actually change mm. how we approach our our lives mm. if if we you know let go of that need for this this fixed outcome mm -hmm. it opens us up to to new possibilities and mm -hmm. allows us to you know be more uh present right, in yeah. each moment exactly instead of getting caught up in the pursuit of you know Where? a specific destination mm -hmm. we can focus on the uh the growth the learning yeah and the the connections that we make along the way right it's about recognizing that the journey itself mm. is is where the real value lies yeah it's it's almost like reframing our uh definition of of success right yeah, yeah, yeah it's not just about achieving a specific goal right but but about how we evolve and and grow as as individuals mm. throughout the process i think that's a that's a beautiful way to put it yeah and it, and it challenges us to to reconsider yeah you know how we set goals how we measure progress and, yeah and how we uh, define fulfillment in huh? our in our lives. So if if our lives are more like a continuous narrative right. than than a uh, you know a neatly packaged film, what, yeah. what what does that mean for for how we approach uh, our choices and and the stories we tell ourselves? It invites us to become uh, more conscious mm. and and intentional about the uh, the narratives that we create. Right. Are we are we focusing on uh, limitations yeah. or possibilities? Yeah. Are we dwelling on the past or, or looking towards the future right the the stories that we cultivate mm -hmm. have a have a really profound impact yeah. on on how we experience the uh, yeah. the world and the, the choices that we make it's it's like we're all authors yeah. of, of our own stories right. choosing the themes the the characters and the the direction of the uh yeah. of the narrative and yeah. that that realization is both uh you know, empowering yeah. and a bit daunting. It is. It it highlights the the responsibility that we have yeah. in, in shaping our own uh, experiences right. and and the impact that our choices have yeah. on the the unfolding story of our lives. Well, folks, we've uh, we've covered a lot of ground. We have in this in this deep dive. Yeah. We've gone from, uh, you know, debunking the the megapixel myth. To, to exploring the the fascinating complexities of of human vision mm -hmm. and and even you know delving into the the profound philosophical implications right. of how uh, how our brains construct reality and and ultimately it, it all circles back to you know yeah. the power of perception and the the realization that that our vision mm -hmm. isn't simply about you know, passively receiving information, right? But about actively creating meaning mm -hmm. from the uh, from yeah. the world around us. So, as as we wrap up, yes. we want to uh, leave you with this final thought: to ponder okay. if if our lives are less about reaching a, a final destination, right, and more about the the continuous unfolding of experience. Yeah. How, how does that change right. how you approach? Uh, your choices and the stories that you tell yourself. We encourage you to, you know, continue exploring these uh, these ideas mm -hmm. to question your uh, assumptions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to embrace the the wonder and complexity yeah. of your own uh, unique visual experience. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on this uh, this incredible journey into the world of human vision. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Until next time, keep those eyes open, those minds curious, and those stories unfolding.